What's going on, everyone? I'm Chris Baker. And I'm Ty Backer. Welcome to episode 130 of Behind the Tool Belt TC Backer Construction. Hopefully everyone's enjoying their week. We got Mr. Backer back in the studio here today. That's right. And we got a very, very special guest with us, uh, Mr. Randy Brothers. He is a busy, busy man um, coming from Denver, Colorado. He is the founder of the Roofing Academy. He runs a very successful podcast called the Start, Build, Grow Show. Um, he wrote a book. Um, he runs a company. Um, all other kinds of cool stuff that I'm sure I'm missing here, Randy. How are you doing, bub? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here hanging out with you guys today, man. I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah, Thank we you are for too. coming, man. For episode 130 of Behind the Tool Belt, man, we appreciate you and, and all of the other rock stars that have chosen to come out and hang out with us and, and allow us to pick their brain and, and embarrass them or have them feel very uncomfortable at times i'm sure and 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 all that good stuff man and and like i told you earlier i didn't get to dig a whole lot i mean i i know enough uh, about you and of course have looked at you as a mentor from a distance and and dig a lot of the things that chris touched on a little bit and in your new book i don't know if it's coming out or if it's been out for a minute or uh, yeah but I, I didn't get to look at it or read it yet so Tell us a little bit about your book. Like, like, how did that transpire? Yeah, man. So it did. It came out a, a couple of years back. Um, I guess prior to starting the Roofing Academy. Um, but I guess the story behind that really starts to the beginning of my career. Um, you know, I, I went to school, and I've always been, you know, well, I, I went to. I say I went to school, but I've literally never done anything or shown anybody my degree. But I learned how to communicate. I learned how to connect with people. And I started my business career as an entrepreneur, like while, while in college. And I did, you know, study business and, and went to school for business and marketing and, and learned a few things there. Um, but right out of school is when, right out of college is when I started my business. And I was just fresh out of college. I'm like, I'm, I got to learn about business. I got to learn how to run a, run a construction company. <laughs> so I searched far and wide to look for some sort of a how to start and run a construction company book. It didn't exist, right? That was way before the days of Amazon and and uh, Google. So we were, I was going to Barnes and Noble and going to different bookstores trying to find something that didn't exist. So I just had to dive in and figure it out. Uh, you know, 10, 12 years later, um, after I was able to kind of through trial and error figure some things out and, and build a pretty successful business, I got to the point where people were just naturally starting to ask me questions and ask me you know feet for feedback and how to do this that and the other in business and and uh it just kind of dawned on me one day that you know what i, I think i'm at a point now in my career that i can kind of share my story and uh, and really help you know those young entrepreneurs out there uh like i was 10 12 years before i could share my story and help people you know start build and grow uh construction companies so that's ultimately kind of what led to to the book and i was in a position where I was able to put the time and energy and, and invest a little bit into into getting it done professionally and uh, 
that's what we did. So it was, it's called the, uh, uh, start it, build it, grow it, the contractor's guide to success. And, uh, and we were able to, you know, get that book. It took a little while to write it, but uh, got it got it done, got it published, and I uh, was able to get on the, the Amazon bestseller list. And, you know, I, I'm super blessed and grateful that it's been able to impact and help a lot of contractors for, uh, I think, four years now. That's, That's awesome. awesome. That's really awesome, man. Yeah. Good stuff, man. So maybe someday I can write a book, but Chris, I'll, I'll have to have you write it for me. <laughs> <laughs> My handwriting is not very good, dude. You might, I'll, I'll help, I'll help you with your words. I definitely but. need spell check on that. Bro. You'd be surprised. Yeah, I'm a dyslexic ADD kid, you know, that, that, you, the people, if you knew me back then, people are like, you wrote a book. Are you kidding me? Uh, right on. I, we made it happen. I, I hired some professionals to help me with it and uh, we made it happen. That's like, really awesome. Like, did they pick your brain or did you start jotting things down? Like how did, like how? How, how would you even get started to write a book? There it is. Um, that's the cover. Of it. You can find it on Amazon. Um, so I actually found a publishing company that kind of works with authors uh, to help. So they kind of gave me a whole framework to follow um, with from concept, like concept, creating the concept for it to breaking down the, the, the different chapters. And then within each chapter, breaking those down into different points. Uh, and then we, we audio recorded it all. Um, and then they transcribed that and then we went to editing and took a gotcha. long time doing the editing back and forth. So, so I was able to just like speak my mind and tell, tell it like from, from my head, you know, through my mouth and, the, and speak specifically on different topics. And that gave me the transcript to then work off of, to actually create and edit the book. Right on. Awesome. Yeah. That's, that sounds a lot better than actually sitting down and just getting a paper or a piece of paper and a pencil and you know, chapter one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, you know, I, 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 I would have never gotten done. I don't think if yeah. I would have done it the, that way. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I was just sitting here thinking, what would I start doing? Just jotting notes down and, yeah. and forget where I put it. You know, started writing on this notepad and then started to put some more notes over here in this notepad mm -hmm. because I forgot to bring that one with me. But no, I, I can see how that. So nobody like was sitting there asking you questions. You actually started to record yourself and then. Like, did you take like one hour a day? Did you, or was this something that you worked on like eight hours a day for six months? So I, I took about a year to do it and I just blocked off, um, it, Wednesday mornings. I just, I gave myself, you know, three to four hours every Wednesday morning for almost a year to, to, to go through the whole process of writing it. And, uh, a funny story about that is I got about, you know, maybe a third or almost halfway through and scrap the whole thing and start it over with a whole different concept. Oh, wow. So that, that's just kind of part of the process. Like I, I didn't really like the direction it was going and I wanted to kind of change it up. So there we will. We just scrapped it and, and started, started fresh. So that's, that added a little bit of time to, to getting the whole project done. Yeah. So tell us more about that. Like, like why didn't you like the direction and, and what direction did you go with it? Um, well, I was kind of originally going with almost more of a, like a storyline, uh, you know, like a timeline of, hey, in the past 10 years, these are the phases I went through in building my business. And, mm -hmm. and instead, I wanted to create more of a guidebook that was like, you know, um, great, valuable information, but dumb enough for like a dumbed down enough for a guy like me to be able to read it and understand it. Right. Gotcha. So totally I wanted to kind of shift and create something that, you know, someone who maybe, maybe doesn't have, you know, a lot of, you know, education or, or that, you know, doesn't quite understand business to read this and really take things to apply it to their business and to have a big impact without making someone going so over someone's head that it didn't didn't work so we wanted to kind of shift and more of a create like a guide and a tool of these are the different areas of business and the step-by-step -step process of building a sustainable and scalable business versus like a storyline of how i built my business mm, yeah that gotcha, makes sense. gotcha, that gotcha, makes sense. gotcha. yeah totally understand and now. i can understand why you would want to kind of shift gears on that because you know your your circumstances and your um you know the, the things that you went through not everyone might see you know, and, and, and you're, yeah. you know, you're, you're, uh, I'm losing my, my train of thought here on, on my words. I want, um, like your experiences that, that you went through the bad, the good, all that kinds of things. Um, you know, if you, if you generalize that for everyone, then they may be able to use it. But if you're just saying like, yo, I went through this thing and this thing, and then this happened and this is how I fixed it. They may not ever even go through those things to really get the value out of that. So to real, you know, dumb it down and generalize it, that makes sense. So you, you know, yeah. you'd have a wider, well, wider audience. 
Well, yeah, and people don't get me wrong. There's 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 a time and place for a good story and, and sharing good stories, but no one wants to sit there and read a book about someone talking about themselves for yeah, two right. three hours. An autobiography right? about you Randy know it's Brothers. it's it's not about me talking about myself. It's about me helping and giving you you tools to to implement to, to take yourself to that next level and to, for you to create success. And I'll share examples of how you know, how I was able to overcome certain things and gotcha. implement certain things in my business instead of just a, 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 a straight storyline of me just telling you story after story. I wanted to kind of have it more of like, this is a guidebook. This is something you can take and apply to roofing and to construction and, and truly find some, uh, uh, some success right away. Right on, man. Yeah, right on. Stuff, man. Would you say that you're more of a residential roofer or, or commercial or a little bit of both? Both. Um, it's funny. I had, uh, I had, you, you had Eric on, on the show recently. I had Eric and Paul on my show, the star bill grow show recently. And, and we, um, and we had this debate on, on, should you be all in on residential or all in on commercial or both? And, and a lot of people think you need to pick one or the other. And I'm the dumbass who's trying to do both, you know, and, <laughs> and trying to be like, I'm, I guess I'm a unicorn, but I want to be really good at both, you know? Yeah. And, and it wasn't, hey, I'm all in on both right away. I wanted to master my craft as a residential contractor first. And then I started working into commercial. And, and now I definitely, I do oversee the commercial department in my company. And, you know, our commercial has actually overtaken as a primary for our roofing company, especially in our market. I mean, we're in a market where we haven't had hail in four years prior, prior to that is 10 years of hail. So wow. we got to adapt. We got to make changes. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is really focus heavily on implementing a commercial department starting with service and repairs and and that has become the primary driver of our business and we've been able to build a brand where, where we've really made a name for ourselves where we're starting to really get our, our our name and our brand into the arena with some some bigger contracts and bigger deals so that's all awesome. to answer your question both you know i'm yeah. we we feel like we can really execute and, and you know we have a well old machine from uh when it comes to residential and we're really close to having that well old machine from uh um commercial as well until i break everything and redo it again because that's just entrepreneurship right i, I get it that's <laughs> definitely yes i i come up with at least 100 great ideas a day but 99 of them suck yep. <laughs> um, but it's just that one that matters <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying so yep. i i saw that you were dabbling with solar How, how's that going for you or am i am i wrong Yep. So we launched the solar again, same thing. You got to adapt to your market. Mm -hmm. and that's a huge takeaway for anyone watching this is do not get complacent. Do not think that the way you're doing things now is going to be the way things are done six months, one year, two years, three years from now. Your job as a visionary entrepreneur is try to stay ahead of the curve and, and, and pay attention to your market and understand what's happening. But our market, the, the what was a primary hail markets that's gone i mean there's very little of that left so but our market it solar is very popular solar is happening there's a lot of incentives and things going on locally within our the energy departments and and the energy companies here locally as well to where it just makes a lot of sense to get into solar and and for us to to be able to kind of plug in and add that vertical into our business just made a lot of sense so yeah we launched a solar department a few months back and uh, there, our guys are rocking and rolling. We're actively hiring and growing and bringing on new, new teammates and selling. And, and they're, they're doing a lot of sales and and um, and really excited about it. Right on, man. That's good. What would you tell a company that hasn't been in the solar yet, you know, that that's kind of sitting on the fence? You know, if they're debating if they should get into solar or not, like what would you tell them? I mean, understand your market. Okay. I mean, don't just go into solar because it's a buzzword and you heard some guy on a podcast say, go to solar, like actually do some research and make sure it's the good, it's your market is prime and ready for it to be a long-term play for your business. Right. Cause right? I, there's I think, obviously I think some great way, federal, go ahead. Oh, I think that's the direction that everyone's going in the country, but it's, it's, it's almost like areas are going, you know, they'll get real concentrated with, with lots of solar sales and it's booming, it's booming. And then, you know, some areas aren't even caught up yet. You know what I mean? And I feel like yeah. our market um, is just starting to like really tip, you know, get to the tip of the iceberg on the solar thing. So that's a great point, man. Know your market because last thing you want to do is invest all this time, energy, and money into opening up a solar division when no one in your market is even interested or even wants solar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. for, for sure. Because I've ran into guys already 
that have said that same thing, mm -hmm. like solar's just not here yet. Um, but for us, we, we have gotten on the solar train as well. We got involved with GAF Energy and it was like you said, Randy, it was like, we're trying to future proof our business. Mm -hmm. Okay. As entrepreneurs, as the visionary of the companies, it's our responsibility to, to try to forecast the best that we can to the best of our ability you know, to, to, you know, adapt to the times. Okay. Like what we did five years ago is not going to work today. What we did three years ago isn't going to work today, you know, and, and today we're in a different era, you know, obviously, I mean, the things are going a lot more energy efficient and a lot more people are asking about solar, you know, and the, and the, and the reason why we chose to go with, uh, GAF energy was because obviously we're, we're GAF master elite. I believe in GAF, you know, through and through, I know a lot of guys, you know, and, and I think all shingles have their pros and cons. Don't get me wrong. I like, mm -hmm. I like certainty. I like Owens Corning, you know, and, and even Tamco now has the uh, Tamco Titan out. So, but we, we chose to go with the GAF energy because we really felt like it, it's something new. Okay. Uh, they came out with the deco tech right away, but we heard rumors and rumblings that they were going to come out with this, this Timberline solar shingle. So we, we stuck it out and we did it. We did, you know, okay on the deco tech panel, but this solar shingle right now, everybody is really interested in that. And, and I think why we liked it was, is because you know, the way that it's attached to the deck, you know, it, it's got, it's, it's different. Um, it's, I think it's 45 Watts per shingle, which isn't as much as what a panel would be, but the con to that or the pro to that is, is that you can put it in a lot more different areas on a roof than you could a panel. Um, so you're, you're, it kind of washes it's out, it, itself out mm -hmm. on, in that direction. But it, we really felt like, I don't know, what was it, like a year and a half, two years ago when we started yeah. to get involved and get our trainings and, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So about two years now, we've been really trying to focus on the solar market and trying to decide which area, like which way we wanted to go, which solar company right. did we want to go with and being a roofer. And, and I'm not knocking any other solar power company out there, but being a roofer, I guess we just didn't have the heart to go with like the rack right system install on you know drilling because how I, I don't know how many roofs that we've had to fix or replace mm -hmm. due to uh the way that the racks were screwed sh just straight through the shingles and and or, and i'm sure that they have come up with d better ways of doing from what right. we've seen what and, we've seen yeah, yeah what we fixed yes for sure along the way <laughs> but but i like that point that you came up with randy that you know it's your responsibility as the business owner to to stay one step ahead of the market yeah yeah. yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and we're we're master lead as well, and and um, you know in in process. So I can't get too 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 deep in it, but but yeah, we're we have a couple different options currently with with solar. We're, we're doing the rack systems, but we're also you know definitely looking into the the shingle type solar systems as well. Yeah, yeah, and there's like I said, there's nothing wrong with the rack the rack system as long as you're it's done correctly, just like anything yeah. else. And and yeah. I probably shouldn't have said that. And by all means, I mean there's well, a lot of great solar companies out there that yeah. are doing it right. Yeah, what what I, th I think what what kind of just to add to that, Ty, what really kind of steered us in the bad direction for that that particular system um, is up in our area, and I think it's this is just due to the the lack of um popularity with solar so far so there's not that many players up here um or at least there wasn't when we started to get into it mm -hmm. and what we were coming across is you know you have a brand new roof that gets installed and then you call a solar company who will send out a subcontractor or some, or some sort that isn't a roofer does not give two shits about what he does to your roof while he's up there installing his solar panels and is not thinking that roofer mentality on how I got to keep the water out of this house. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like, I feel like there were so many steps that were skipped because the people up there were solar experts, not roofing experts. So I think what kind of helped steer us in the direction of the GAF was just simply that it is being developed, be de bleh, being developed by a roofing company, um, by a roofing shingle manufacturer, with you know the roofing uh warranty in mind so you still get your gold pledge warranties and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff and you know just to fasten to the deck everything you know it's installed like a skylight like all the all those pros you know kind of outweighed the cons of all the war stories that we ever saw because you know we're predominantly new construction 
Um, and a lot of our divisions down in the Maryland area, after we put our, our roof on, you know, these, these real big um, high-rise communities are getting solar panels installed on them. So it's like we put a brand new roof on there. We're carrying a, a two to three year warranty on this, on this brand new install um, with the builder. And nine times out of 10, when these panels are installed, I'm going up there, you know, six months later and it's, oh, well, these guys just probably had screws all over the roof and they're stepping all over them, you know, just caulking giant holes that they miscut. They, you know, put a, uh, put a rail system down and they realized it wasn't right. So they moved it up six inches and you just got white caulk and all these holes. And it's like, what is going on up here? So it was a lot of real bad war stories that were like, uh, we're, uh, we're good on that. Mm-hmm. For sure. <laughs> For sure. So how did uh, how did your podcast get started? Did that happen shortly after you wrote your book and decided like, hey, man, I really need to get this message out there on, you know, teaching and making an impact of of the newer contractor in our space? Uh Oh, we don't have audio. Can you hear us? I think we lost your audio buddy so there we it, are. yeah it, sorry about that uh wrote the wrote the book um with the idea of you know putting the message out there you know you don't write a book you, i'm not trying to you know you don't make any money off of writing a book like just in case people thought that that's like a good thing no <laughs> you write a book to get your message out there to establish credibility and professionalism and, and to really help uh you know serve the, the community that you're trying to serve with the book so I did that, and then the idea came to, okay, why don't we take some of the content in here and add more to it, digitize it, and create, you know, an online course, right? And then that was the original, you know, foundation of what the Roofing Academy was. And then from there, you know, I had I, I was working with Nick Perret, who has another show. He was my original co-host of the show, and, and he was at the same time. I was getting ready. I was trying to launch and get the Roofing Academy going. And he had a, a marketing company that he was trying to get going. And we were, we were good buddies, and we were kind of working together on a lot of things. And we just decided one day that, hey, let's just go live and talk about stuff with roofing and see what happens. And, you know, so we did that. We went live. And, then, and I think it was like three or four episodes in, someone in the comments on the live was like, hey, do you guys have a podcast? And we were like, Hey, let's do a podcast. Mm -hmm. And, and then we started recording it and then we started kind of getting the audio and up, upping our game with the equipment and the software. And, and then it kind of just evolved. Then we started bringing guests on and, and it's just kind of evolved from there. And I mean, I think we're almost, we're at 190 something episodes, getting ready to come up on 200 episodes. Um, we, we record once a week, just right. Currently we're on Mondays at four and it's been awesome. And it's been a great way to stay in touch with the industry great conversations just like we're doing here you can bring yeah. on industry guests and just connect with people and and ultimately provide you know real time real talk and and good value to to the industry that we all love so yeah. how long are your episodes uh they're usually about 45 minutes give or take sometimes an hour sometimes 35 minutes or so gotcha gotcha see i you know you just just so you know you got three people in this studio right now that respect the grind mm. and understand how hard that is to do man it is not yeah, man. it is not easy um especially doing a weekly thing you know sticking to that that weekly schedule and and being able to fill you know 35 45 an hour sometimes longer of good content week in week out you know what i mean and because i'm sure in your 193 episodes or whatever you may have had a couple guests on that were just stale <laughs> and it's oh like, man you, you just this? gotta you gotta adapt and, and you gotta be able to right. try to you know not keep easy, it. And none of us have any real training we don't know no. what the heck we're doing <laughs> but you just kind of learn through through repetition and observation right but there's something in in the you know the world of you know, communications, TV and podcasts and all that, like dead air is like kills you. Yes. So if you have a, a, a client or, or a guest that's just not articulating very well, we have to, we just know. And that's why you guys have done the same thing where mm-hmm. you take two, two people, you guys can dialogue as much as you need to kind of fill gaps right. and keep the entertainment and keep the value going. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people do like a one-to-one podcast and there's a value for that. But mm-hmm. I liked having two co-hosts and a guest because it just kind of gives it a little bit of extra dynamic and, yep. and filming it live. Like, you know, we're, we're just examples of that right now. Like what we're right. doing. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it definitely helps, man. Cause like mm-hmm. he, at this point in time, we're 130 episodes in, I can look at this man and I don't even have to look at him. I can hear in his voice. 
if he's starting to struggle and same with same with me mm -hmm. like he can just tell if i'm starting to lose my train of thought or if i'm just not feeling the conversation or something we just know each other and that's something that i'm sure that you've built with your co-hosts and stuff that it's just it's just kind of natural man it's kind of like when you when you develop a team you know mm -hmm. when you first get together it's not it's not that great but once you guys start clicking it's like you know shit just happens and, it, and it's fun it's a lot of fun man it is fun. Yeah. It, it definitely is fun. And, and there's been a lot of trial and errors. There hasn't been much that we haven't experienced. Like we've had <laughs> floods rolling through the studio, three, four inches of water as I was sitting on my stool, basically keeping my feet off the floor as water was running through. We had a real bad storm. We lost power one night and then had to find a generator to plug everything back in midstream. Uh, we've had crazy. all kinds of crazy stuff. We've done it from different countries, different states, and and uh, but it, it's been fun. It's been like our little rock band, not to yeah, get man. off on like the podcast tangent or whatever, but you know it's been fun, and that's what really intrigued me. And I'll be honest with you, Randy, you were definitely one of the first podcasters that I started to watch and learn from, and, and the content and the nuggets that you guys provide, like it was. It was inspirational and I was getting, I, I still do, I get a lot from, from, you know, the guests that you bring on and the things that you guys talk about, you know, is just, I've implemented a lot of those things, whether it be I'm studying your podcast or, or I'm listening to how different products that, that the people that you bring on the show are providing their clients i mean it's just it, it has really intrigued me and and where we've kind of shook out in in this podcast world or space for say is is kind of like you know it's a little bit different like where we, we really want to know who the who our who our guest is that we're bringing on not mm -hmm. necessarily um you know what product are you selling today randy or yeah. do you, you know or or by all means if there is something that you want to plug bring it on in here and let's plug the shit out of it um but it's more so like who who's randy what what has driven randy you know mm -hmm. what what is yeah. randy's why and and those types of things and i think that's why we kind of started out with like your book like obviously you know that that drove there was a drive there to do that for some reason and obviously it was a part of your purpose not it wasn't for money property or prestige it was because it was a part of your purpose it's a part of your legacy and 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 it, what's really cool is is that we always have fantastic guests that have a great purpose you, mm -hmm. you know what i mean and we really want to know you know we might not come out and say it but but like it, as the irony of it is is like behind the tool belt so what's what's randy behind the camera you know, like on the other side of the camera that that everyone in facebook world doesn't see you know the mm -hmm. the glitz and the glam like that grind and that hustle you know this shit doesn't happen overnight it's mm -hmm. determination yeah. It's getting out of bed when you don't feel like getting out of bed. It's getting out of bed when you're sick. It's, it's uh, you know, uh, relatives die. And, you know, but what it's our responsibility to get up. And, and now we have people that, that we're looking after and that people that rely on us and, and that drive and that determination, you know, uh, and, and, you know, that I know for me, that was that that wasn't always my purpose. My purpose was because I had and we talked a little bit about this last week was that I got bills to pay and miles to feed and nothing in this life is for free. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was like my, my initial why when I got into this. And, um, you know, but today those things evolved, you know, into more of a purpose thing where were, you know, just like your book, like, dude, writing a a, a book mm -hmm. dude that's that's not everybody can say i wrote a freaking book and you didn't do it for the money but but you felt like it's it's like you wanted to change it more into like a basic text mm -hmm. and not a life story of randy brothers i mean that's really cool and that's that's very unselfish of you like if you really think about that because i want to write a book and i want everybody to know all of the dirt and the glory that ty backer is and what he's about <laughs> you know what i mean but you shifted gears into like no 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 dude nobody Nobody wants to listen about yeah. me. how can I bring value to this industry and, and dude that is literally and we say this on the show all the time man like it is such a great thing at where our industry is and where it's going you know we have guys like you we have people like Jen Silver mm -hmm. um, Tim Brown um, you know t tons of other people I, I can sit here for an hour and name names on on great people in our industry that are strictly doing these things just to add value man just to add value yeah. because I'm sure, you know, like you kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, you wrote this book probably be because 
you didn't want people to have to go through all the bullshit that you went through. And if you can maybe provide someone with a little bit of a shortcut to save two years of headache, you know, cool, you know, let's, let's do that. But it didn't, oh, it wasn't always like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just cool that people like you in the industry are willing to sacrifice your time to do that kind of stuff, man. For real. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. I mean, and that's, you nailed it with just, I'm, I'm a big believer. And I think that's been a big paradigm shift in our industry and in just entrepreneurship in general. You know, I'm a third generation guy. And, you know, back in the day when, you know, my grandfather was building his business, he didn't call his competitor. He didn't go, you know, mm -hmm. and ask them for advice or share any of the things. It was, I know what I know, and I'm going to keep it behind my, behind my chest and I'm going to be the best and compete with that guy. Mm -hmm. And now we've, we've evolved to where, you know, the whole industry rises if we all support one another. This collaborative yeah. effort that we're dealing with and, and that the industry has created has, has been awesome. And, and it's we're seeing it more and more and more. Right. As, and that, that's what things like the Roofing Academy, that's how it evolved is we wanted to create a community. I mean, I work with my competitors and they're kicking butt in our market, in a crappy market. But we're sharing. I'm learning from them, and they're learning from me, and we're helping each other. We're doing. We're bringing other competitors together and helping. All the ships are rising, right? Yeah. Rising tide rises all ships. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I appreciate those those compliments. So I will use the opportunity. You mentioned Tim. You mentioned Jen to plug mm -hmm. the the one industry one model yes. tour. Yeah. Guys, I, I'm doing the whole tour, and and there's man, what Jen has done is brought together some of the most high, you know highly influential and you know i'll even say highest integrity speakers and people in the industry yeah put and everybody in one place niche. there's three or four different yeah. business coaches right like oh my god i want to come no man jim that's my guy like i learn from him every time i hear him speak and vice versa you know we connect with one another you got jim johnson out there and you got a number another number of other speakers that are going to be there like if you really want to understand the value of investing yourself and learning from others learning from the best minds and the, and the best people in the industry mm -hmm. there's 11 different events check it out one industry one model.com and if you do buy tickets you can use my promo code randy 15 and you can get 15 percent off um, they're doing two for one deals or uh, you buy two, you get a little discount and they're coming to cities near you. So the travel is really easy, but it's, it's two days that literally could change your life. So if you haven't, if you're on the fence and here's the thing, me included, you guys too, we're roofers. We are notorious for like last minute decisions, <laughs> right? Like, Oh, oh yeah, this, this yeah, event's yeah, coming up in four days. Let me spend <laughs> twice as much money on an airline ticket and book my hotel four blocks away because the other one's full, mm -hmm. but I'm going to go stop doing that. Get it now. Plan your day, plan your life out a little bit more than two days, two hours at a time <laughs> and get your dang tickets. Let's go. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Minneapolis in two weeks, guys, two weeks on the 6th and 7th of July. That's hot. Yeah, I love it. Awesome, and there is a lot of great people. I mean, Jen, I, I got the pleasure of listening to Jen um, this past weekend, and I got so much out of it. And I'm grateful I recorded the, the entire, uh, I don't know what it was, two 45-minute sessions of training that she provided us guys at Revolt. And uh, there was so much stuff that she that uh, she explained to us that, you know, and, and it's not about just uh, – you know, the, the retail model, it's, it's, it's what best fits, you know, and that, that she's not, uh, you know, fighting for one way or the other. It's, it's just, you know, she's just trying to educate people. And like you were talking about earlier, the people, and she's bringing people of their expertise in their areas with her, you know, whether it be uh, financial stuff, you know, by, with financing business coaches, Hunter Blue with leadership and, you know, Randy brothers, you know, and, and Dimitri, do you know what I mean? These are reputable people and TJ McCormick and Tim Brown, mm -hmm. you know, for marketing and, and things like that. It's like, these people do this on a daily basis. They're professionals. They get paid yeah, to they, do this. They do it at a very high level. Yes. So, you know what I mean? Right. They're, they're very good. And I liked how you put, I like the word that you used, Randy, of integrity. You know, there's, there's a, there's a good group of people um, in our industry that are, are really putting themselves out there that, that, you know, they have a very high level of integrity. And that's, that's just what I love, man. Mm -hmm. I love that. For real. And that's really what it's all about. You know, it's about that purpose that we were talking about and that legacy and everything and, and trying to be the best version of myself. And, right. and by missing this two day event, you know, and, and, and me wanting to learn and, and, and be a better person. It's like, by me not going to this, I'm, I'm only, I'm selling myself short. 
you know, with the, the amount of people and the knowledge that's going to be fired off and the nuggets that are going to mm-hmm. be dropped at this thing, man, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty amazing. I mean, I think it's probably one of the best things that has ever happened for our industry. Probably something different. I can't remember like a tour, a, a, I don't even know what a roofing tour, I guess. Yeah. It, something like it, that. You, you know what I mean? Like what, it, it's almost like you, you guys are like the rock band that that's going on the 2022 <laughs> tour this year. You know, it's like, you guys need to make t-shirts of like all your stops, you know, in the back, like the old yeah. Motley Crue t-shirt. Where, I, know. I, I appreciate your effort trying to make <laughs> roofing look cool, man. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey. But by no means is any of us that, that entertaining as like a rock man, but, yeah. but the things you can learn <laughs> right. can, can change your life and put profit and money in your pocket to go see whatever rock band you want to see mm-hmm. and to live a life of freedom that you want to live. Right. There you go. And, yeah. and it's great because because all of us have different topics and different things. And, and as we kind of wrap that, this part of the discussion, you know, one of the things that I'm passionate about and, and a big reason is because of my own experiences, you know, I like to share this a lot on like podcasts and these sort of things, but you know, and I share about it in the book as well. Like in 2010, I mean, 12, 12, 13 years ago, I was bankrupt. I went completely broke after mm-hmm. starting a business two years after starting a business. And, and I learned so much through that rebuild, through that process of, of changing, learning and build, building a business that we scaled from 2 million to 20 million in four and a half years. Mm-hmm. So I've seen all, all spectrums of that level of scale and growth. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to my development as a leader, but also my respect and understanding of numbers. Mm. And that's what we're talking about at this event. Absolutely. Is, is how to truly run your business by the numbers. Okay, how do so many roofing companies that are doing millions of dollars one year go bankrupt the next year or fail or disappear one, two years later? Because none of us have ever been formally trained how to actually run our business by the numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my mission. That's my purpose. That's what we do at the academy is we teach contractors how to run their business from the numbers, everything from, you know, P&Ls to job costing to, you know, uh, to targets, to, to goals, to like tracking every single metric you can possibly track in your business to be able to leverage all of that data and information to make good sound decisions, to then grow your business, be profitable and create more freedom for yourself. Absolutely. That's in a nutshell, what we're talking about when we, when we deliver our, our, our talks at the one industry, one model event. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, That's man. Really cool, man. That is good stuff right there because you, you're right. A lot of people don't know their numbers. You know, I I think they don't know the difference between net profit, cost of goods, and and gross profit. You know what I mean? And I always call that the gray area there. You know what I mean? You got your cost of goods, which is your gross profit, right? So you basically got your materials and you got what you spent on your labor. But then there's so much more that comes after that, whether it be marketing, Mm -hmm. whether it be taxes, whether it be labor burden, whether it be... All kinds of stuff to operate the yeah. ink, the the office mm-hmm. supplies, the the everything that goes into that. And once all of that it shakes out at the end, you come up with what's called your net profit, and that's the bottom line there that you really need to pay attention to. And I too had gone through some shaky times myself. We went through the recession, and if you want to talk about scrambling and and, and that glitz and glam that you don't see behind the scenes of of making poor decisions and. Oh, just not even knowing what the hell I'm doing. You know, that's that's the part that that we don't see on Facebook. Everyone wants to show, you know, those big ass insurance checks that they just received, and no one, no, you know, they, they're showing their brand new trucks and their brand new wraps, but they're not they're not talking about that back behind the scenes of of just accounting 101. You know, knowing your numbers. You know, and and it's real simple. We came up with a, an Excel spreadsheet years ago. Right, that that kind of broke everything out for us. So it was a, a little more defined, opposed to just the cost of goods, labor, and materials, and it had a little bit of everything in there. Like, uh, and, and that's another thing too that nobody ever talks about is overhead. Like, what is what is your percentage of overhead? What is it? Is it is it is it five percent? Is it seven? Is it twelve? Is it nineteen? Do you know what I mean? I think once you can really define what that overhead cost is then you can correctly bid a job Mm -hmm. you know what i mean there's guys around here like that are underbidding us right now and right now is not the time i don't think to really go out and cut your nose off to despite your face or else you're not going to be here in six months to six years you know what i mean yes do we need to make some adjustments right now to to meet the mark 
the market standard because you know everyone's feeling pressure at the pump everyone's feeling pressure at the grocery store but before you start fucking around with your numbers you better know your numbers right you, you know what i mean before you start slashing your profitability down to you know 35 you know from 50 down to 35 percent and, and slashing your 19 percent overhead down to 12 percent and and your salespeople's commissions down like you got to first and foremost make sure everybody's following the process first and foremost and chris baker mm -hmm. and i talked about this this morning a little bit like if if everyone is following the process okay Without the process, you can't identify two things. Is it a, is it a process issue or is it a, um, personnel issue. a personnel issue, right? Okay, and I'm not saying personnel issue, meaning it in a negative light, like they're lazy or they're stealing or anything like that, but maybe our training wasn't done well enough. Yeah. Maybe the message wasn't put out yeah, clearly. Maybe enough the or... message, maybe it wasn't painted <laughs> clear enough in their mind for them to understand exactly what the process or does the process need a tweak. But if everybody's following the process, then you can really get down and dirty with your numbers because you know exactly what your overhead is. And I think that's a huge component of where a lot of people don't understand like what exactly overhead is. I mean, for the lights to be on in here, like what is that? What does the ink cost me in the printer? What what does the paper, what does Jocelyn's salary? Like all of that, bits and pieces of that go mm -hmm. into quoting that job. I mean, it, it, it really does. And I think a lot of people don't understand that part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's one of the first things is, you know, that we're going to do is, you know, do a full analysis on a company to figure out what they know, what they don't know. No no judgment it's just what, what do you know what do you not know how are you tracking things you know what are you doing what, what kind of systems do you have in place to track measure and make decisions because at the end of the day that's what it's all about is leveraging numbers to make decisions to then achieve what a goal or, or the vision is that you want to achieve mm -hmm. and one of the most important things that you're, you're talking about with overhead is your run rate like what does it cost your you to walk into your office and turn that light on every single day right do you know that cost do you know whether you did a roof or not today, how much did it cost you to operate this today, this right. week, this month? we got to dig into the numbers and understand that. And, and nine, eight, uh, either eight or nine, like it's all, uh, I, I want to say nine out of 10 roofers, even, even experienced roofers that have been doing things a long time. When you actually start diving into their books, they're a mess mm -hmm. because uh, to no one's fault. We just, right. We don't know. We don't know. Right. right. We hire some bookkeeper or our, 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 our wife or mom or our girlfriend or daughter or, you know, our friend to, to come in that knows some something about QuickBooks, figure out, you know, here, run a QuickBooks, create that. Or, or if they or if they even have QuickBooks, mm -hmm. run the books. And and we just build systems that what, what we think is going to work. But the reality of it is roofing itself is a very, very dynamic and unique model. Especially if you're, I mean, you're doing new construction. A lot of people are doing, doing um, uh, re-roofs. They're doing insurance work. They're doing retail work, commercial work, solar. All those things are different. You know, when you're dealing with mortgage companies, you're dealing with insurance companies, insurance claims, and all the things. You, you have to be like a doctor's office, a contractor, a sales per service company, like all mm -hmm. these different business models all wrapped into one. And you got to have good, clean books to be able to tell you exactly the, the story of what your, how your business is actually performing. Not easy to do. You know, there's a big difference between, you know, you asking an accountant or a bookkeeper of, of your standard, you know, accounting practices and cost-based accounting. Mm -hmm. Two different degrees, guys. Yeah. Yep. In roofing, we're cost-based accounting. It is not an easy task. And what we got to do is, unfortunately, eat that elephant of, like, the, the thing that we ignore the most, the thing that we don't want to deal with the most is figuring out, do we have a clean set of books? Do we have a clean chart of accounts? Do we, are we job costing things properly? Because mm -hmm. I can't even tell you what your run rate is. You can't even tell yourself what your overhead and your run rate is unless you have all that data in the right categories and, and, and categorized properly. Absolutely. Right. I, wanna, I don't want to get off on a tangent too yeah, much. No, no, we're no. going to dive into some of this <laughs> stuff. I was hoping to be thing. able to pull some you know, of that. That's why I started to smile because you were getting on a roll, and that's the shit I want to hear. And I'm sure yeah. I'm hoping that there's a viewer or, or a small entrepreneur or a business owner out there right now listening to you because that is such an important, crucial part. Because I think what happens is like when, when your mom or your wife is doing the books, they're saying, hey, we, we got to pay a bill. You guys need to hurry up and go and get that job done. 
You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're, they're they're operating from like job to job, like like almost like living from paycheck to paycheck. They're not looking. Is anything sticking? Like, are we even making anything? Are we able to pay next week's bills? Is there enough prudent reserve? Like, what what is a prudent reserve? Does anybody even know what a prudent reserve is? Um, you, you know what I mean? It's it, it's it's tough, and and I'm ignorant of that too. I started out in business at a very young age, and I thought I knew it all. You know what I mean? I really did. I thought I knew it all back in 2005. I left my brother-in-law and it's like, you know, I run his business now. I'm going to go out and I'm going to start my own business. And dude, when the recession hit, bro, like... <laughs> We weren't ready, ain't what, that, I, I Dude, I went bankrupt because I, listen, of it. I had I no clue what I was yeah, doing. I like, wasn't living the dream. I, I was living the motherfucking Peter nightmare. To Paul, that's for sure. Right. Yeah. Well, let's face it, guys. I mean, when we're talking about the roofing industry, how many, you know, roofing companies out there in this country got started up because it's this is their last stop? Yeah. You know, I can't get a job anywhere else. You know, either I have uh, poor work history or, you know, I, I, I was unreliable. I burnt too many bridges or... You know, this is, I, I don't think any better of myself and I feel like I'm only good enough to go swing a hammer on a roof. Like, right. you know what I mean? How didn't, many didn't graduate how many people, high school, right? You, you yeah. know what I mean? Don't have a college degree, you know, and I'm guilty of that. I don't have a college degree. Did I go back to school? Of course I did. I, I went to business management and accounting and stuff like that. Now I couldn't tell you what the hell I learned back in those days, but, um, cause that was such a long time ago, but you know, I, I know at the scale that we're at, and Chris says we, we, you know, we still do predominantly new construction, but if you look at the amount of work that we do on the new construction side and the amount of work that we do over on our retail side, the numbers are about the same. Yeah. You we know, just got to do a but, hell of a lot but, more over but on the, the new production side. and yeah. the things. And it's like, you know, I, a lot of people was picking my brain about new construction. It was kind of like, I really didn't want to tell them because everybody thinks it sucks and it does. So if anybody listening out there that thinks that new construction <laughs> yeah, sucks, the, it does. Sucks. Don't play with it. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyhow, but yes, there's money to be made there too. But this is the thing you got to run lean and, and, and green. Yeah. On lean this and mean, thing. right? Yeah. Lean mm -hmm. and mean on this thing. And you got to know your numbers or don't even play with new construction. The thing with retail and insurance work, it's like people see these big checks. Like I just beat up the insurance dude. And sometimes I watch some of these videos and it's so uncomfortable for that guy, the adjuster that's on the roof with this dude, this, this experienced roofing guy. It's like, I almost can't watch it because it's like, dude, you're making him look like a fucking asshole. I mean, maybe if you got along with this guy, maybe he would cut you a check. Okay. But instead of sitting there like belittling him, like, because we just had a situation where we put a roof on Friday, the neighbor's house or garage caught on fire so basically the roof that we installed on friday melted saturday morning yeah, okay it's gone so i had to go out and meet a public adjuster out there and what happened was is that the roof prematurely like just disintegrated like the granules were falling off of it like you could see the fiberglass mat like i've never seen anything like that opposed to looking at a roof that was 25 years old right okay but we just installed it 12 hours earlier and i'm like oh my god like i'm looking at this thing and like the starter strips like oozing out over the drip edge it's coming down off the eaves and stuff and i'm standing there and i'm looking in the backyard and i see this big oak tree with like the leaves that are disintegrated and i'm like oh my god I saw all the roof granules and I had the adjuster with me and he's talking about doing some repairs and stuff like that. And all I had to say to him was, I was like, you see how the, that, that shiny fiberglass mat, he was like, yeah, I said, that's because, and it rained some, somewhere in between that. Well, the rain started to wash the granules off the shingles and expose the mat. Right? So when I showed that to him in a professional manner, right away, his instinct was, is this needs a new roof put on it. I didn't have to make him feel like an asshole. I didn't have to, you know, and, and, and where Jen's model would come into play, and I feel for our organization is, is okay, like the retail end of things, like, like both ways it could work, okay? Like if, if, if we can get the insurance company to pay for the roof, great. Okay, if we can't finance it, and what if they can't, what if their credit score is not good enough to finance it? But then that's when we would work even harder to try to get the insurance company to pay for it. But I would say at least 25 to, to 35 percent of the retail roofs that we put on, it's financed. You know what I mean? That's yeah. that's and that's something that we're going to push even harder, like like not even giving them like the fifteen thousand dollar grand total. It's like, OK, this is your payment. Nine ninety nine dollars a month. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just like they would at a car dealership. I don't think anybody really looks at like 
like the, the 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 sticker price of a car yes you do it first but really when you go inside when you start sit down with the salesperson what makes or break it is how much am i how much am yeah, i okay. going to pay how every much month? is it going to right. be a month and if, and if like if we yeah. can get like our sales people and i'm not speaking for any other roofing company out there but if we can get our sales people in that mindset of like stop putting that 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 the big price tag at the bottom show them what their monthly payment's going to be i know we use mosaic now because we use it for a lot of solar stuff and they have a great solar um term and, and stuff like that but anyhow um you can actually go in there and like if it's a fifteen thousand dollar roof it'll allow you to run the numbers and give the breakout for like you know 24 months same as cash and what you're you know, in that 25th mm -hmm. month, like what your payment would be, um, no prepayment penalties. I mean, there's so many options and so many terms and, and so many different financial institutes out there that are willing and capable of doing a construction home loan mm -hmm. nowadays. Like, I just yep. don't know, understand why more people aren't using that model. I really don't. Well, I yeah. think, I think a lot of it has to do too. One, we're just not asking, right? So we're not, we're not, we're, that's a big thing. If, if you don't ask, how do you know if somebody's going to finance it? Right. Okay. Like I'm, I'm literally going to be going to buy some new furniture here, like today, probably. Um, do I have the ability to just swipe debit card or credit card to just pay for it outright? Absolutely. No problem. But will I entertain financing for 0% for 24 months? Is there some better, like, as I'm very into the financial piece of my life and it's like, can I spend that couple thousand dollars or whatever in the market or on something that can maybe grow and multiply itself? Or do I just put a big chunk of money right now in something that I can get zero interest on it and just have it as a budget item? Yeah. People don't realize that. They're like, they assume, there are salespeople don't realize that. They assume, well, they, they have money. They're not going to want to finance it. Mm -hmm. But the people who have money didn't get there by accident. Yeah. Okay. They got there because they know how money works and they know the concept and the value of leveraging other people's money. Right. Right. Just because you can write a check doesn't mean you're going to, because if that interest rate's low enough, you can write a check to something else to make more money on your money than than the interest that you're paying. Right. Right. But people don't we, we just as salespeople just assume that people don't think that way. We just assume that they don't want to finance because they have money or they got a test on the garage or whatever. No, like ask the question. You, you never know what you're going to get. So I think that's the key takeaway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Great, yeah, great sure. response to that because it's, it's, yeah, you don't know until you ask, you know, Hey, are, are you thinking about financing this? And I don't, I think there's a lot of roofing companies out there, not just roofing companies, but any construction company right now. I, I, th I think there's still a lot of people out there that don't offer financing. And I just, I really feel like that's a killer. Yeah. That's you're going to be behind the curve if you're not offering financing. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Once Great. again, let's plug in. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, yeah. one industry, one model. Yes. We're going to Minneapolis in a couple of weeks, and yes. then we'll be. Uh, I think in Dallas, we're going to any. No, in Minneapolis, Indy, Indianapolis, Denver. Come see me in my hometown. We got Dallas. We got Phoenix. We're going to Pennsylvania. We're going to Boise. We're going to Florida, North Carolina. Like we're all over the place. It's going to be awesome. Uh, one industry, one model.com. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Jen Love actually it. linked the, uh, the website here in the comments for anyone that wants to go visit the website and check it out and stuff. There you go. Um, before we get rolling here, Randy, I just got to ask you one question, man. Um, it's a question that we ask people a lot when we bring, when we bring guests on, um, what, and, and it actually matches here. I think I already know what, what you're going to say, but we'll see. Um, what drives you, man? And not just like, you know, I, obviously I know that fine. It's not a financial thing. You know what I mean? Um, but like what motivates you and drives you to not only just like do your job and the multiple things that you do on a daily basis, but to do them at a high level to wake up and just, and put your best foot forward every day. What motivates you? You know, first and foremost, um, in my faith, you know, is, is a driver for me to wake up every day and, 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 and live a life that, that, that can inspire others. But the, our values at the Roofing Academy is the values that I live myself. And, and it's to serve, lead, teach, and inspire. You know, I feel a calling and I feel it's my responsibility to, to serve my industry, to serve the people I love and care about, to, to lead by example, to, you know, to teach, to share the things I know, and to live a life that inspires others. And, awesome. and one of the things that, that what, it, what, what that means to me 
is who I am on Friday night at midnight and on the weekends and behind closed doors is the exact same person I am right here and right, right now. And I think that's vitally important. And unfortunately, I think not just our industry, but the world we live in, that simple concept is way mixed up guys. And, and if somebody can take that, like who you are behind closed doors is who you are outside and you don't even realize it. Love it. Good stuff, man. Yeah. I love it, man. Thanks for the authenticity, brother. Um, like I said earlier, you're a big inspiration to me. I can't wait to, uh, perhaps get to know you better. Hopefully we can hook up at some time, maybe collaborate, get on your show, uh, yeah. what, whatever, you know what I mean? I just, I hope that, uh, our, our relationship, our friendship can grow. Um, I feel like our, uh, our core values probably align pretty well. And I know Baker, Baker can contest mm-hmm. to that too. Cause I know where his core values lie and, and all that and Vic. So if we don't see you, we will definitely see you in Philadelphia. No doubt about it on August, what, 30th and 31st. That kind of like ends our our season of uh, madness there towards the end of August there. We, mm-hmm. we tend to fishing seasons over. Oh, I got a couple of fishing tournaments that I get the guys in each year. And, and it starts in July. And I think the last one ends right around my birthday from the 17th to the the 21st so i'll be able to get my head back in the game here a little bit and yeah come up to philly and see you guys and uh, i can't i can't wait man i can't say enough about you guys tim brown tj mccormick uh randy you guys are just the best and uh you're my heroes man so thank you for coming on the show and and god bless and i love you guys yeah appreciate it, man it's been a pleasure guys for sure Let's do it again soon. yeah yep. for sure man tc backer family thank you guys for watching um if you guys have not please um subscribe to the page uh, share this this episode out, and definitely go over and check out Randy Brothers. All the stuff that he's got going on, he's got a lot of a lot of plugs over there that you can go check out. Lots of good value. Um, so if you're a contractor or anyone that's interested in business, if you're an entrepreneur, make sure you check him out. Go check his book out on Amazon. Um, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their week, and we will see you guys next Wednesday for episode 131. Everyone have a safe and uh, good rest of your week. Boom. Take care.